Hi guys, it's Grant from Local Scraper, and I'm here today to introduce you to our new scraper, uh, TripAdvisor Scraper. This scraper was built due to demand by my current customers, so I hope you guys will enjoy. Now what this video will cover is a quick tutorial on how to get started with the scraper. Uh, more detailed information is included on the README, which is included with this program. Um, so let's begin. Right now we are on the main tab right here. Uh, we have our keyword location. These should be pretty self-explanatory, but when using TripAdvisor, you are going to give them a location and a keyword. Um, so you will enter those here. Um, for example, if I wanted pizza, this would be pizza restaurants or something. I wanted to look in Key West, Florida. Florida. This would be the same as if I came here and I started typing Key West and Pizza. It's the same as that. Uh, if I hit search, those results, uh, these results, will be the results that are displayed down here in the program. Um, next up is the keyword list and the location list. Um, this is exactly how it sounds. This allows you to semi-automate the program by feeding it a list of keywords and a list of locations. Now when using these, you must provide both. You must provide a keyword list and you must provide a location list. Um, here is a keyword list and then I have one, two, three, four, five keywords. Now here is a sample location list and then I have one, two, three, four, five locations. If you are using one keyword, you must have one location. If you are using 10 keywords, you must have 10 locations. Uh, the program will match line to line what will be used. So Abbey Wood London will be matched with restaurant. Abbott's Langley will be matched with food and so on. So line 10 will match with line 10. This is why your location list needs to match up with your keyword list. They must be of equal length. Um, if you want to just use one keyword, say restaurant, across five locations, the term restaurant will have to be repeated five times. Okay, and once you go to here, you'll click here and it'll say choose file, it'll bring up a pop-up. You just point this to where your text file is um, in your computer. Uh, the same with the location list. Next up is the custom URL. A custom URL is a URL that you've already taken from um, TripAdvisor. So for example, we've already come here and we've searched Key West Florida and we've searched for pizza places. Now we have this page full of results. The custom URL will be this that is up on our address bar up here. So if we take that and we paste it in here and we start the scraper, the scraper will automatically come to this page and begin scraping these results. Um, what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to use any filters the site might have and it will allow you to better target and see your results before actually scraping them. So if you go to the site, you can bring up everything you want. You can get it to look exactly how you want, like this is the data I'm sure I want. And then you can copy that and place it into the program. Uh, the custom URL list is, um, oops, I actually opened it, is um, the same as the other lists. Um, what this does is it will take a list of custom URLs. Now I don't have one of those real quick to show you, but say this is a custom URL, and then if we searched Miami, yeah sure, Miami Beach, and we'll search for the same thing, up in the address bar is now another custom URL. So you kind of get the point. Um, line by line, uh, you'll want to have your URLs. You can have uh, as many as you want, but um, Keep it uh, reasonable, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, over here on records found, this is how many uh, business listings the program has found while it is scraping. Um, current record is the, um, um, the, the spot in the program where it currently is. So if you have 100 records found and you are at 50 current record, that means you have 50 listings that have been scraped already and their data has been saved to a CSV file. Uh, current proxy is just that. It lists, it lists out the proxy number of the um, proxy you're using. Um, max threads is a setting you set in the options for the number of threads you want. And current threads is how many are currently in use. 
So real quick, if we go pizza, we go Key West Florida again, um, and we start the scrape, it will go to TripAdvisor, it will do the search, it will bring up the search results, and up here you see the current records is increasing. Um, this is because the program down here on the bottom is going through the pages and getting the results. Um, if I let it continue, it would have gotten to 300 and some. And then after it gathers all of the result URLs, it starts collecting the data. So at this point, no information is actually saved by the program. You have to wait until current record is higher than 1 for there to be data saved to a CSV file. Um, now I will go over to the options real quick. Um, if you are using proxies, you will need to check here. Um, you will need to supply the program with your proxy list. Your proxy list should look like this. It should have the IP address and then the port number. Um, it says this right here, IP port. Uh, you cannot use proxies with usernames or passwords. You will need to set them up with um, IP authentication. Um, nearly all proxy providers will allow this though. So you'll want to use proxies, you will want to choose the file of the proxy thing, uh, your list. If you don't know if your proxies are working or not, you can click test proxies. Um, I highly recommend testing your proxies if you are using free public proxies that you have found. If you're using paid proxies that you know work because you've paid for them, you can skip the test proxy section. Okay, if you are a hide my ass customer, um, you can use this option to um, use Hide My Ass. There's more details about Hide My Ass and the proxies um, on the README page in their own sections. But if you're using Hide My Ass, what you will want to do is open the Hide My Ass client, um, make sure you are connected to Hide My Ass, select Use Hide My Ass, and then set a wait time of how long it takes you to fully connect. Um, so if it takes you about a minute to get through all of their stuff and connect it to the server, you're going to want to set 60 seconds here. And what this will do is once you have it pre-set up, as the video below this in the Hide My Ass section, is when you start the program, it will request a new IP from Hide My Ass, um, change to that IP, and then begin scraping. So at the start um, of each run of the program, it will ask for a new IP address. So if you're using the list functions, um, and you have this set up, it will cycle through all of the IPs that you've selected to cycle through in your Hide My Ass client. Um, for more details on that, see the video about it. Um, scraper settings over here is the wait time. The wait time is the amount of seconds you would like the program to wait um, between page loads. Now, this is good if you are using proxies and they connect a little slow. This is good if your internet connection is a little slow. This is good if you want to mimic uh, human activity. Uh, we all know that a, a human will not go to TripAdvisor. He won't look at a page for two seconds, then look at another page, two seconds, another page, two seconds. Uh, TripAdvisor will sort of catch you at some point, realizing that you're not actually reading any of the pages. The default wait time by the program is a random number between two and three. Um, I know that doesn't seem like anything, but it uses uh, micro increments, so like a second and a half and stuff like that. So if you want to set the wait time higher, you'll want to set it at four or five. If you're um, really concerned, you can set it to 10. You can set it to whatever you like. But realize that setting the wait time higher is the time per page. So if you have it set to a minute, like 60 seconds per page, and you have 200 and some listings, that means you will be waiting 200 and some minutes. Um, the way to speed things up, obviously, is over here in the threads. Now this is um, just like opening another web browser and another web browser and another web browser and having them all sort of automated for you. So by default, the program runs with one thread. Um, if you are not using proxies over here, you will want to use one to two threads. Because um, again, TripAdvisor will notice if you have 10 open tabs of their page and each one is going through multiple websites. If you're using proxies, you can set this higher. So what a thread will do 
is it will, if you set it to five, it will make things five times faster. Because instead of one robot going out and collecting the information, you now have five robots going out and collecting the information. If our wait time was still 60 seconds, um, each one of these robots, all five of them, will go out, visit a page, scrape the data, wait that 60 seconds, and then continue to scrape another page and so on and so on until all the pages are scraped. Now before, if we had it at one, it would have taken the time for one to go wait 60 seconds. So you can see how this will uh, speed up things. But remember, if you're speeding up things, the odds of you getting caught are much higher, so you will want to use proxies. Um, max listings is the max number of results you want the program to return. Um, right now we have no limitation on the number of results you can get. The only limitation that is there is the limitation that is set by a TripAdvisor. So if you're going through the results and they say they have 10,000 results, but they only show you 2,000 by going through the pages, then our max, rest, uh, max listings is 2,000 set by them, not, not by me. But if you only want the top 10 results in each area you're scraping in, you will want to set this at 10. Um, this will not be exact because it goes by full pages. And I believe TripAdvisor has 30 results per page. So by the time it realizes what's going on, you'll already be on page 2. So max listings of 10 will return you about 60 listings. Um, this is much better, though, than if you didn't set anything and you only wanted the top 10, but it gathered all 2,000, you know. Um, file options, this will timestamp the files so they won't be overwritten. Uh, the save folder location is a custom setting if you want to change where the program saves its files. Currently, it will save them to the exact folder where this program is located from. So if you're running from your desktop in a folder called TripAdvisor Scraper, then they will be saved to the desktop in the TripAdvisor Scraper folder. If you don't want them to save there, you will have to select a different folder uh, using this option, and it will show the, the URL here. Now remember, when the program is scraping, so long as current record is higher than one, there will be a data grid down here at the bottom showing you the results. Those results are automatically saved to wherever you specify um, the file to go. And finally, we have the scraper options. We have the scrape website option. What this does is it is a custom coded uh, website scraper that is part of the local scraper. And if the company has a website and you have this box checked, the scraper will now, after it's finished with TripAdvisor, visit the company's website and continue looking for data. Now the data it will look for is a contact email, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus accounts. So if emails are important to you, I recommend having this on by clicking this checkbox. It is not on by default, and it will add a little more time to the scrape because it's checking another website after TripAdvisor, but the data you get is well worth it. Okay, um, I believe that's it. If you have any more uh, questions, make sure to look down on this README page. It does cover a lot of information. Um, if you have any more questions after that, uh, fee feel free to email me um, at support, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Okay, I hope everybody enjoys the uh, new TripAdvisor Scraper by a local scraper.